Well, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Celeste Harrison and I am so excited to welcome you all to today's Explorer Classroom. Here at National Geographic, we believe in the power of exploration and wonder and storytelling to change our world for the better. This Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students from all over the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and tons of time for your questions. Today, the explorer we are featuring is Mark Kozlerich. Mark is a National Geographic photographer. He grew up in Wisconsin and is now living and working in New York City. His journalism and photography has been exhibited all over the place and has won a variety of awards. It's appeared in publications you might know, like the New York Times and Time and CNN and the Wall Street Journal and the Weather Channel and many, many more cool places. Today we're joining Mark for a tour of the different locations he's gone to and the different people he's met because of his camera. I can't wait to see his pictures and hear the stories of how he made them. But before we do that with Mark, I wanna welcome all of our friends joining us from across the country and around the world. So wherever you may be, give us a cheer when you hear your state, your country, your school, or your class. Today, our students are representing Pennsylvania, Ontario, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, Florida, Colorado, Washington, Wyoming, Illinois, Indiana, Maine, Maryland, British Columbia, and the District of Columbia. I've got some special shout outs to give. I want to say hi to MK Lewis Millville, St. Bernard, Mountain Ridge, PSDV, Franklin Elementary, Swansea Public School, Coit Creative Arts Academy, St. Luke's, Lambertson Studies, the Kang Family, the Roscoes, the Ellens, the Wilsons, Miss Turner's class, Mr. LeBrun's class, and Miss Morgan's class. We are thrilled to have all of you here today. And with all of that talking out of the way, it's time to get Explorer Classroom started for real. I'm going to turn it over to Mark so we can all learn about life as a photographer and about all sorts of cool things that have happened because of his camera. Take it away, Mark. Thanks, Celeste. I'm going to start sharing here. And all right, so like Celeste said, hey everybody, I'm, I'm Mark, I'm a photographer. I'm based in New York City and I'm gonna talk a little bit today about my job and what my job means, where it's taken me, some of the things I've seen and the people I've met because of my job. Um, so like I said, I'm based in New York. Oops, we lost the screen share, apologies. Um, I'm based in New York and um, my job means that I'll have somebody at a publication like Celeste listed, um, a news outlet, like a newspaper, like the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or a news website will reach out to me and tell me about a story that they have that they're working on and that they need help um, telling and they want me to find the right photos that tell the story um, with their help and um, connect people, make them feel more um, like they understand the story in depth. And so I take my camera, like I have a camera right here, one of my cameras that I take with me and like you'll see a camera in this picture and I go out and I meet people, I spend time with them I listen to them. I try to understand what they're going through and their perspectives. And to me, the whole point is to be a good listener and to make people feel comfortable with me so that when the time comes, I can take photos of things that sometimes other people might not get a chance to see. So I spend time with them and I wait for the right moment and I wait for the right things to happen. And I take that photo so that whoever sees that photo might understand their story or their life a little bit better. And I'm going to show you a couple of places that I've been and some of the people that I've met. But I figured a fun place to start would be some photos of me working and where I've gone since I've been a photographer. This first photo here is me in college 10 years ago covering a basketball game in Wisconsin. Um, the action got a little closer to me than expected. This player had fallen over and slid into me and knocked me over. And uh, I've covered a lot of sports. Sports was something fun. Oops, I'm gonna 
close something here and try this one more time so I don't get alerts anymore. Sorry about that. Um, sports was something fun that I've done um, quite a bit in college and in grad school and a little bit since then. Covered football and baseball and basketball and hockey. And I do not know why I keep losing my screen share. I really apologize, guys. Um, let's try this one last time here. Here's a photo of me. Sometimes I get caught on TV making funny faces. This is me and a little girl at a political event that I covered a number of years ago. And um, you'll sometimes find me sneaking around in the background of some places too. I don't know if you can pick me out. I'm right, right here. Um, I got to travel around the country and um, fly on a private plane and follow somebody that was trying to become president of the United States. And it was this gentleman right here, Bernie Sanders, who's a senator from Vermont. And that took me all the way to the Democratic National Convention, where they announced that Hillary Clinton would be the pick to try to run for president a couple of years ago. I've worked in Egypt. When I was in Egypt, I looked at the Christian communities in Egypt during their Easter celebrations and what their neighborhoods were like and what their hobbies were. One of the big hobbies there was to raise pigeons and fly them around, which I thought was really pretty interesting. This is me in Mexico. I worked in Mexico on a story actually on my birthday a couple of years ago. It was a really difficult story, but it was a really important story. And I was really, um, really excited to be asked to get to travel and go to an interesting place and, and make photos. Um, sometimes my work isn't always the most fun or comfortable. I sometimes have to work long hours and bad weather, a lot of rain and snow and and cold and um but sometimes you catch me making sad looking faces uh, i i really probably wasn't sad when this photo was taken but sometimes i make faces when i'm thinking about okay what do i have to do for work because it's still a job it's not just taking photos i have to really think hard about the work that i'm doing and uh sometimes my friends like to make fun of me for the faces that i make but Really, it's, it is a lot of fun. I get to go to a lot of different places and meet a lot of different people and, and see history that happens, um, which I think is just a really cool job. So this last year was obviously, it's been really hard for a lot of people. And um, this actual photo was taken actually later that night, I would realize that I had some symptoms and I was sick. This was uh, almost exactly a year ago. But when I got better, one of the things I tried to do was I tried to find moments where people were happy and having fun and and not just all the sadness or times when people were helping each other because i think that's really important to remember to help each other and be there for each other and i got out into nature and got to see some cool sites out in nature on assignments and i got to visit some magical kind of faraway places and try to bring people there with my camera and i, I think that's pretty cool and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to tell you a little bit about another faraway place that I went. Might not be as far for some of you, but um, this faraway place, it was really quiet, kind of, I'm really sorry. I really wish I knew what was going on with this, but. Oh, don't worry, Mark. Like all the students in their Zoom school understand technical issues. I for some sure. reason, there's like an annotation going on on the screen, and I don't know what, what's going on. But um, anyway, so, okay, this is a faraway place that I went to. And for some of you, it might not be that far or that unusual, but I went to South Dakota. Um, and I was out there in this giant, vast space, these big skies and these buffalo running around. And the next nearest town was a town of about 30 people. And I was out there because a couple of years ago, this place was the farthest place that you could get in the United States from a McDonald's. And I just thought it would be really interesting to go out to this place because I wanted to know what it would be like when you were two and a half hours from the nearest 
you know, happy meal. And even though I was that far from McDonald's, I got out there and there was this trailer out there that somebody had from a McDonald's, which I thought was really, really interesting. Um, going to keep bringing the photos back. So I got out there and I thought it was magical because it seemed really different than New York City. I grew up in a small town, so I'm not that um, unused to the small town life, but you know, we didn't have Buffalo and the weather was really intense. The winds would blow faster than a car would drive on the highway sometimes. You know, we don't have horses in New York City and, and anywhere that I've been, people don't keep their horses right next to their pool. So I thought like, wow, this is really, really different and really cool. And, you know, the people are tough. They work with their horses and there's so few people in the area is so big that, you know, people are often, they seem to be really alone. They're really isolated from each other. They're really far from each other. And for some of you, I know we've got people from Wyoming and other places. This might not seem that unusual, but for people that live in cities, this is really pretty different. The kids, not much older than you, kids in high school work hard jobs on the ranch. They, they might shear sheep, give sheep a haircut to get the wool so that they can make sweaters. And it's really tough work. And I, I just thought this was so strange and different to me than different than what I'm used to seeing. And, you know, where I went to school, kids didn't wear cowboy hats to prom. I just thought that was so, so neat. And you had crazy things like a cow in a bathtub. I had never seen that before, but this cow had been born in a blizzard and it was, um, it was dying. And so they had to bring it inside and, and warm it up and give it a bath and bring it back out to its mom. But sometimes the animals didn't make it all the way out to their moms either so you had a, a cow or a lamb in your house for for a couple of days while you're trying to make it feel better and so yeah I kept thinking about all the things that were different about this place and how cool it was but I started to realize that you know a lot of the things while they might seem different there's actually a lot of different things every place that I go you know, every place is slightly more different, but there's also a lot of things that are the same. I grew up in a town where football was big, and I don't know about you, but football was big where I grew up. I actually grew up a block from where the Green Bay Packers play um, in the NFL. And so I was used to this, but out here, yeah, there are less kids, there are less students, and they have to drive sometimes three hours or more to play a football game, but it, it was sort of the same. And if you had a lot of work and you needed help, you might call your friends or your, your family and ask them to, for help, just like they would on the ranch when they had a lot of work to be done, like branding a couple hundred cattle. And there was church. My dad's a pastor. And so I was used to going to churches all throughout my life. And, and this, this was really familiar to me. It kind of felt like being at home. And there's the basketball games and recess at school, even though the school might look a little bit different. And, you know, for me, it was, it, it just gave me such a different perspective. You know, we, we all want to have our friends and family around. We all want people there to support us when we're sad or to be there for our friends when we're sad. Right. We want to, be there for our friends when we're happy and celebrate the good times and give them a hug and say congratulations and and it's all stuff that no matter where you go is is kind of all the same and so for me the fun thing is that while this place is really cool and and had a really important story to tell the things that made the story easy easy to understand weren't necessarily the things that were different they were the things that were the same, the things that we could connect to. And my job is really to look at those things and, and photograph them in a way that shows how special they are. So just like when an editor calls me and gives me an assignment, I have an assignment for you, all right? 
So the next time that you're feeling bored at home or thinking that you have to go somewhere far away to see something cool and interesting and different, I want you to go and ask your parents to take you for a walk or maybe a little drive somewhere not too far away. And I want you to go out and take a look at the world around you and try to discover something new or interesting about your own world that you haven't really seen before. And it could mean talking to an old person who's your neighbor, like this guy, Pat, who I had not talked to even though I'd heard a lot about him. And once I talked to him, he became one of my best friends. It might mean going to a store you've never visited before that you thought was interesting. Like I'm not a mechanic, so I didn't really go to the auto parts store, but once I did, I realized people hung out there because that was a good place that they could be with their friends. And, and I thought it was really special. I want you to go and find something interesting in the world around you, because I think that when you finally do get a chance to travel and go on an adventure to a faraway place, you'll notice that wherever you go, people aren't so different after all. And if you find anything interesting, I want you to reach out and let me know what it is you find. All right. So thanks so much. And thanks for putting up with the technical issues. and. And stop screen sharing here and get to some of your questions. Well, Mark, you've given us so much to think about in terms of similarities and differences and different communities and all kinds of different places we can visit and things we can learn. How can students get involved with your work and your mission in their own schools and communities? I think the number one thing for me, especially lately, I think a lot of us, and, and you might agree, that we're all kind of missing being able to be around each other. Um, being able to do those things like hug a friend who's sad or celebrate with a friend. So when it's safe to do more of those things, I want you to think about all of the ways that it's important that we support each other. And, and one of the best ways that you can get involved and support what I'm doing is just to be good to each other, be good friends to each other, support each other, but also like I said, I have that assignment for you. I want you to be kind of curious about the world around you and explore your own world, not necessarily think that you have to travel far away to find something cool. And if you do that, I think it'll make the world a little bit closer of a place. Um, you might meet somebody that's interesting that really needed a friend or um, find a way that you can help somebody out. And the best way that you can help me is by doing that stuff for each other. Uh, because I think every, every place that I've ever gone is special in its own way. And so I'm sure wherever you're at is special too. Um, so help me by helping everybody else around you and be a good neighbor to each other and, and be curious about the world around you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much to Mark for doing this super cool work, making these beautiful pictures and taking time to hang out with us and share it all. And thank you to our students for the fabulous questions. Thank you to teachers who make cool stuff like this happen. As a reminder, we are almost to spring break. Just like many of you students, Explore Classroom gets to take a spring break. So our spring break is next week and the week after from April 5th to April 16th. And then we'll be back with plenty more Explore Classroom events on our usual schedule. As a reminder, you can register your students for a shout out and a chance to be featured up here on screen at natgeoed.org slash exploreclassroom. Happy Women's History Month to all of our viewers and hug Samaic to all of you out there celebrating Passover. Have an awesome day. Stay curious, keep exploring, get in contact with Mark if you wanna do more photography um, and have an excellent